and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 20, we'll take a look at the shared database integration style. As we saw in the last lesson, in the book Enterprise Integration Patterns by Gregor Hope and Bobby Wolf, uh, they have identified four main patterns or styles of integration, file transfer, shared database, remote procedure invocation, and finally messaging. Now lesson 19, the prior lesson, we took a look at file transfer and kind of the pros and cons. In this lesson, lesson 20, we'll take a look at the shared database integration style. When we look at the shared database integration style, we notice we have three applications or three services, application A, B, and C, all sharing the same data context. Application A, B, and C know nothing about each other. And as a matter of fact, if we take a look at some of the protocols, um, first of all, I know SQL is not a protocol. It's a structured query language. But most of the time when we think of shared database, we think of the access to that database, especially in relational form, as SQL. So I kind of just listed it here. But from a protocol standpoint, we really have ODBC, which is Open Database Connectivity, JDBC for Java Database Connectivity, um, OLADB, which is Object Linking and Embedding Database from, oh boy, way back when it seems, <laughs> and uh, Remote Database Access, RDA. These are all kind of the protocols that are used within shared database. Now, when we take a look at shared database and some of the advantages of this integration style to be able to integrate application A, B, and C, again, it's data-only access that we have between these. But it, like file transfer that we saw in the last lesson, this is near universal in integration style. In other words, almost every platform is able to access and read and write to a database. And as a matter of fact, the ease of integration makes this it very, very popular. If application A and application B exists and application C needed to get to the data, let's say customer data, the very, very easiest way to do that is just to simply connect to the database and get the data. In other words, we're all able to kind of communicate through common data. As a matter of fact, the system level of abstraction here is fairly high in the sense that applications A, B, and C can be in any kind of platform. A can be in a separate platform and language than application B, and the same as application C can be in a different kind of platform. So we get a high level of system decoupling. As a matter of fact, we have a high level of system decoupling here with shared, share, shared database because I can be application A, let's say, and I could be interacting with the database, and I could be up and running, and I'm not dependent on application C being available at all, nor application B. And that's what that system decoupling level is. So from this description, this looks like a pretty good integration style, but I will have to say, out of all four we're going to be looking at, the shared database is probably my nemesis. And it's for four main reasons. First of all, shared database integration style does not work well with object relational mappers such as Hibernate or Toplink or OpenJPA or nHibernate. Because these kind of things, and I'm just going to use Hibernate as the example, um, uh, makes the assumption that it is exclusive owner of the database. In other words, with an ORM, I'm not actually talking to the database. I'm actually talking to a cache, which is fronting the database. And so consequently, if I have a shared database, I can no longer make the assumption that I exclusively own it. In other words, I have a cache of data, and somebody else may have changed that data in the database right out from under me. And so this doesn't really work well with ORMs. Uh, when we see that we're using a shared database, First of all, I'm going to have much fewer cache hits, and that is going to be definitely a performance uh, decrease, I would say. Uh, the other bigger problem, though, is the fact that now I have to, let's say in Hibernate, select some sort of version ID. In other words, I have to have a version annotation to select which column is going to tr be treated as my version ID. Now, typically in most database schemas, table schemas, we'll use something like a a timestamp, for example. But 
Maybe not every table has a timestamp, and maybe those aren't updated via triggers, but rather application code. So we can't be guaranteed whether that timestamp is actually accurately being updated, which means we may have to change every single table schema in our database to be able to add a version ID with that version annotation in Hibernate. And so this is where it just really does not work well. Uh, the other problem that starts to occur is the second point down here, the performance bottleneck issues with a shared database. In other words, with the shared database, the more applications that are connected to that data, um, the more that database is going to start getting stressed out. Look, a database is nothing more than a piece of software. It usually sits on bare metal, and it requires threads, memory, and CPU like any other piece of software does. And the more we put stress on that database, the more resources it's going to consume, and it can become a performance bottleneck. And the third problem, the third main issue with shared database, are schema changes that then propagate through. Can you imagine if I have all these major applications using that shared database, and I want to make a breaking schema change in a relational database? This means I can have to coordinate three applications to make that change. And what we generally find is that we can't make or it's not feasible, I should say, to make those breaking schema changes. And our database basically becomes locked in time. And furthermore, no one really owns the data. And so these two last ones are really, really important. As you can see, while on the left-hand side, this looks really easy, there are a lot of negatives associated with the shared database integration style. In the next lesson, Lesson 21, we'll continue with integration styles and actually take a look at remote procedure invocation, that whole class of integration style or protocols including web services, REST and SOAP, CGI, RMI, and all the host of ways of connecting to establish um, uh, connectivity to basically not only transfer data, but also functionality as well. And so this has been Software Architecture Monday. Uh, stay tuned for next week, Lesson 21, where we'll take a look at remote procedure invocation. Thank you very much.